Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of uh, the video lecture for chapter 21. Uh, in this uh, lecture I will be covering the remaining two major topics, uh, refrigerators and uh, the Carnot or the Carnot, she's French, Sadi Carnot, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the Carnot engine. We'll talk about those two. So let me start with the, um, the refrigerator. Um, Last time we talked about the, uh, let me go back to the, to the notes here. Uh, last time we talked about the heat engine and we said that uh, heat engine um, is, a, is a system that takes in heat from a hot reservoir. So here is the hot reservoir. And, and it takes this heat in into the system and it does work it is uh, say the motor or whatever and it does work the work here is an output and then the remaining heat is extracted or expelled from the system to the cold reservoir a cold reservoir here would be something like the air the ambient air the atmosphere whatever Okay, and the, for the case of a car, for example, the hot reservoir is the engine itself, you know, the cylinders in there. So heat is extracted into the system. It does, it makes, uh, work is, is, uh, uh, is the output of that heat. Of course, not all of it, some part of it. And then the remaining uh, heat is extracted to the environment, you see what I'm saying? And uh, we say that the efficiency, we said that the efficiency of this engine is work divided by uh, Q hot. And the Q hot is basically this heat coming from here. This is the heat coming from the hot reservoir. And then here you have the, uh, the heat going to the cold reservoir. It's not, of course, cold, but we just call it Q sub C. Okay? So the efficiency would be something like that. Uh, is that it is the work divided by the heat uh, coming from the hot reservoir. Of course, also the work here, uh, I just gave the work. The work is the difference between QH minus QC. So in this case, the efficiency is QH minus QC <coughs> over QH. And that gives us one minus uh, QC here, uh, QC over QH. Okay, that's another expression, same thing, but that's another alternate uh, expression for the calculating the efficiency. All right, so what is a refrigerator? So a refrigerator, let me write it down first. Refrigerator. Okay, a refrigerator is a heat engine that works in reverse. So it's a heat engine that works in reverse. What that means is that I have this diagram, you know, this uh, energy flow chart right here, okay? But everything is in reverse, like this. Imagine that I have, uh, here is the, I don't want to call it the hot reservoir, I'm just going to call it the outside, okay? Let's say, let's apply it to the refrigerator, the regular refrigerator you have in your kitchen. So that would be the outside, basically the outside air, the kitchen, if you will, okay? And then you have, here is the system, the refrigerator, and then you get here a cold reservoir or inside the refrigerator. This is the inside. Refrigerator, REF, okay? So what happens is that it takes in heat from inside the refrigerator, okay, which is you can think of it like the cold reservoir, and then it, it uh, and it takes it to the outside as QH, that's the heat. So it takes in, uh, takes out QC, and it it ex expels it as Q hot. Okay. Now, of course, we know that hot, uh, uh, you know, uh, heat flow flows from hot to cold. That's the natural order of things, right? That's what's natural. 
it, heat flows from hot to cold. Uh, here, on the other hand, you have something, uh, heat is flowing from cold to hot. Well, you cannot do that. That's against the laws of thermodynamics. The only way that you can do that is to input work into it. You see what I'm saying? So the, in, the work here is a negative, and it's input. It's not an output. See, for, for a hot reservoir, there we go, I just wrote it down. The work here is an output. Why? Because it is natural for heat to flow from hot to cold, and as a result of that, well, you have work as an output. You know, the motion of the car, for example, okay? Here, on the other hand, it's impossible to do that so, uh, spontaneously by itself without inputting a work in it. You see what I'm saying? That's the main difference. However, it still is that the work here is the difference between those two. If I put them in terms of in absolute values like that, the work is basically the absolute value of the hot minus, and the book doesn't emphasize that very much, but that's really, this is how you should think about it. Okay? And the sign convention is that the the heat coming out uh, coming out uh, from the hot reservoir excuse me from the cold reservoir is a uh, positive this is c and then you have going into the hot reservoir is negative and the work is negative okay more on this later when we do a problem so okay that's basically what the refrigerator is so the refrigerator is a is a heat engine that works in the opposite direction. And as a result of that, we don't really calculate the efficiency of the refrigerator in terms of work over Q. Uh, there is another expression for it. Let me talk about it a little bit. It's called COP in the industry. Our book calls it the coefficient. Uh, I mean, it, uh, COP stands for coefficient. of performance, of per performance. <clears throat> and our book uses the symbol capital letter K. I've seen them there in other books. But COP, if you look up in, in the industry, I think they call it, they use uh, the the abbreviation uh, COP. So what is uh, what is the, the COP here, the coefficient of performance? Um, the best, let me just write that, the best refrigerators Um, are the ones are the let's say their best refrigerator is the one uh, that removes the greatest amount of heat from the cold reservoir from CR, you know, the greatest amount of heat, which is Q sub C, okay, from inside, from the hot, cold reservoir, which is basically from inside, uh, from inside the refrigerator, from the inside uh, the refrigerator, uh, it, with the least expenditure Of work W again we'll put an absolute value there okay so the coefficient of performance basically it's the best uh, the best refrigerators is the one that removes the greatest amount of heat from the inside kind of makes sense right from the inside of the refrigerator with the least expenditure of work so in this case the coefficient of reform of performance COP or as our book calls it, K, is equal to the absolute value or the ratio of Q sub C over the work. You don't need to put the absolute value if you keep in mind that you want to keep them positive, okay? And usually the larger the value of K, uh, the better the COP, okay? 
the larger the value, which basically the larger the Q sub C and the smaller the, the, uh, the W. In other words, let me just write it in a different color. Uh, let me use this one, uh, let's say red. So what I want to do here, I want to, I want to maximize, maximize Q sub C and I want to minimize Uh, w, of course, and that's as a result of that, uh, you are getting the greatest, greatest possible value. You got that? Okay. All right. Uh, let me look at my notes. Uh, I want to make sure I covered everything before I move on to Carnot cycle, and then we'll do a couple of problems. <coughs> Okay, I think this is this is enough for the refrigerator. I'll I'll, uh, I'll do a couple of problems and show you how this works. But so let me move on to uh, the Carnot cycle. I don't want red. I don't like red. Black. the Carnot cycle. Carnot cycle uh, was uh, invented by uh, a French uh, engineer. Uh, his name is Carnot, Carnot, or Sadi Carnot. Unfortunately, he died, I believe, around the age of 39 or 36. He was very, very young. He came up with this remarkable thing about the uh, uh, what, uh, what is the maximum value of the efficiency. Uh, let me look up. Um, I'm trying to look up some information about him. I can't find it here. Anyway, so what he said is the following. He said, is there a way that I could measure the maximum efficiency of an engine. In other words, give me, uh, if, if I am given an engine and I know, uh, say, uh, the temperature, the cold from, the, you know, the temperature of the cold reservoir and the hot reservoir, is there a way that I can calculate the maximum efficiency that I could uh, have, uh, the maximum that, that this, this engine can perform with, okay? In other words, the Carnot engine, let me just write it down here. The Carnot engine says the following, is that no engine with greater efficiency than the engine with efficiency equal to 1 minus T sub C over T sub hot. C and H here are hot and cold. Okay? I'm going to derive this formula for you in a minute. Okay? In other words, for uh, they can, for engineers, they can never um, exceed the efficiency E of the Carnot engine. In other words, let's say I'm an engineer and I come to you and I say, you know, I'm going to design an engine, whatever it is, diesel engine, whatever it is. I'm going to design an engine. And you ask me, what are the two extreme temperatures of the engine? Okay? And I tell you, TC is this, the T hot is this. You put it into this formula right here, okay? And you would calculate the efficiency. It means I will never ever be able to design an engine that has a greater efficiency than those two, than, than between, between those two specific temperatures that I have just told you. You see what I'm saying? That's really the meaning of it. We'll, we'll do an example in a minute, okay?
Okay. Uh, what he did, let me show you that. What he what he did, we created a cycle that looks like that. I'm going to try to draw it. Uh, maybe I should show it to you on the book first because it looks nice in the book. Um, uh, let me go there. Here we go. Carnage cycle. <clears throat> because my drawing is not going to be that uh, that great. There it is right here. This is the, the Carnet cycle. So what you have in here, I wish I could, uh, mag can I magnify that? How do I magnify that? This way? Uh, yeah, good, right? Uh, maybe not. I don't know. I, I don't know how to magnify it. Anyway, so the, the, the Carnet a, the cycle, the Carnet cycle, basically, what you're looking at here. Okay, so you got a typical PV diagram, and then you have a uh, four steps here. Uh, it starts from one, two, to two, to three, to four, to five. Notice that steps uh, one to two, and four, or rather three to four, are an isotherm. Okay, these are isothermal processes. And then uh, from two to three and four to one are adiabatic processes. Okay, so basically the Carnot engine or the Carnot cycle is composed of two uh, two different uh, uh, processes, two adiabatic and two isotherm. Okay, here is the drawing of that. I'm going to draw it my own way, and then I'm going to derive that formula for you. So it looks something like this try my best to be as neat as possible. So here is the PV diagram. If I go slow, I can manage. It looks something like that. <coughs> uh, these are the adiabatic, the adiabats. Ah. And then, sorry about that. <clears throat> it's very symmetric, okay? Everything is symmetric here. Look, something like that. Let me use the eraser. Okay. Where it starts from here. What I want to do, I want it to start from here, okay? So I'm going to call this step A, and it's going to go to step B, okay? The process. And this is isothermal, okay? So the isotherms are here. So this is an isotherm, and then from A, from excuse me, from B to to C, and that's an adiabat, okay. And then from C to D, and that's another isotherm, okay. And then we have an adiabatic process here from D from D to uh, from D to A, okay? Okay, so here, um, let me just put a different color. Uh, I'll use maybe green. So here we have, here's the isotherm right here. We're going to call that uh, T hot. And then the other one here, it is uh, parallel to it. I apologize for the bad drawing. This is T cold, okay? Okay, so this is basically the Carnot cycle. So since we have two isotherms, remember that those two isotherms are parallel to each other and the adiabat are parallel as well, okay? Uh, I know this is probably the worst drawing of a, of a cycle that you've ever seen, but I, I can't help it with this. I am still learning about this stylus pen, but this is how it looks like. Look at that. So you get those isotherm, those two are parallel with each other, and then those two are parallel, the adiabats are also parallel, okay? Um, okay, so um, so we know that from the first law of thermodynamics, delta U is equal to Q minus W, uh, and for the isotherm thermal process, delta U is zero, right? There's no change in temperature, so this, tells me that Q is equal to W, and as a result of that, um, this Q equals W equals to NRT natural log of V uh, A 
over VB. Okay, and we're going to call this equation one. I want to, I'm, I'm setting up the equation because I want to derive that relationship for you. And then we go to the adiabatic for any adiabatic. I'm talking here in general without the, uh, the current cycle. So adiabatic process. What's so special about the adiabatic process is that Q equals zero, correct? And with that in mind, if you remember, it is T1 uh, V1 to the power of gamma minus one equals T2 V2 gamma minus one, correct? Okay. And then also we know that the, the efficiency of a heat engine is equal to W over Q hot which is also equal to Q hot minus QC over uh, Q hot, and that's equal to one minus QC over Q hot, okay? Let me call this uh, equation two. I'm gonna number those equations because I'm gonna, gonna be referring back to them. Yeah. Okay, and this is equation one right here, okay? So let's begin. So again, I want to look at this process, and I'm going to start uh, with the process A to B, okay? It's an isothermal process, and it is at a temperature we're going to call T sub C. You got that so far? Okay. So what I have in here, I'm going to take the process uh, A to B. So that's an isothermal process. And as you can see here, we have a compression. Is that right? You get the volume is less. This is the volume right here. So you have less volume. You have a compression. And when you get a compression and you want to keep it isotherm, that means heat must be extracted. So for sure, we have heat. Q is coming out. So when it comes out, that's Q sub C. Is that right? So we have heat extracted here to come to uh, in order to keep it at the same temperature. Makes sense, right? So here we have isothermal and we have a compression so we have heat extracted or removed q sub c okay all right um so oh, of course heat extracted uh, q sub c to keep uh process or system at t cold is that right okay so now what I want to do, I want to calculate this Q sub C. Well, how do I calculate it? Well, I just use equation one right here, right? So let me use it. Remember, I'm going from B, VB to VA. I mean, uh, I'm talking here for the, for the natural log. So in this case, it's going to be Q sub C is going to be equal to NRT. T here is cold, right? natural log of V sub B over V sub A. Okay, and I'm going to call this equation three. I'll come back to it. Okay, now let me go to another isotherm. I want to, I want to do the isotherm first. So now I'm going to do the other isotherm from C to D right here. Okay, that's another isotherm and it is at temperature T hot. But look at that. I'm going an expansion of the gas. You see what I'm saying? There is an expansion of the gas, which means what? It's going to get cooler, and the only way that I could uh, keep it at the same temperature, I have to put input some heat in there, right? So in this case, there will be, let me, let me draw it here. So there will be a heat input there, Q hot into it. Got that? Okay. So this here, the process from C to D, So let me write it down. So we have to find uh, the heat <clears throat> uh, put into the system at T hot is Q hot. Again, it's an isotherm process, so we're going to do the same equation for the isotherm. NRT hot, however, right? natural log from what from v sub d over v sub c correct we have that so what i want to do now i'll show you in a minute why i'm going to reverse those two and pick up a minus sign so i'm going to write it this way 
minus n r t hat natural log of v c over v d. I'll come back to the, oops v d that minus sign. So this is the equation that I'm gonna keep. And uh, this is equation four. Okay. Now. I want to get the efficiency. So what is the efficiency here? We want to get to have epsilon, which is 1 minus Q sub C over Q sub H. Well, before let me uh, let me just get the, the ratio Q sub C over Q sub H. So that's going to be Q sub C over Q sub H, and I have them up there. Okay, so uh, if I do it, I have it. I'm going to copy it from my notes right here. So uh, for Q sub C, which is equation three, it's N R T sub C natural log of V B over V A divided by minus n r t hot natural log of v i forgot what is it v sub c over v sub d v sub c over v sub d like that okay of course the n r's cancel out here the natural logs remain okay And I'm left with the final. Let me just write it down. Uh, so the final version, not the really final. I'm going to come back to it to reduce it further. So I have here minus T sub C over T hot times uh, natural log of V sub B over V sub A over natural log of V sub C over V sub D. I'll come back to it. Okay. So I have this equation right there. I'm going to call it equation number 10. I know it's not following uh, consecutively. I'm going to call it number 10. Okay, I'll come back to it. Now, I want to work with the adiabatic processes. Remember, so we have here, let me go back to the graph. So we have, these are the two isothermal processes. And now we're going to talk about the adiabatic processes. And I'm going to begin with B to C. Okay, and then I'm going to do D to A. Keep in mind that the, for the adiabatic process, this is the, 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 this is the relationship that will work, right? So we're going to use equation two, okay? All right, let's do it. So now work with um, B to C. Now remember, let me just, uh, so this is adiabatic, what that means, no <coughs> heat, <coughs> excuse me, no heat leaves or enters the system. Keep that in mind, right? So there's no Q there, right? So there's temperature, there's temperature difference, that's fine, but there's no heat enters or leaves the system. So from B to C, that's going to be T, um, uh, C, which is T, uh, I'm going to call it cold for now. Is that okay? Because I am, I don't want to confuse it with uh, the C here. So I'm going to call it TC, but this TC is the same as this TC, right? You understand that? Uh, o, uh, times VB gamma minus 1 equal to T hot times V gamma minus 1 TC. Everybody understand that? Here, let me, let me go back and explain that to you. Looking for the graph right there. Okay, so I'm taking it between B and C. So if I call here, look at that. If this is one and this is two, so T1, which is the temperature here, which is TC, V1, which is whatever the temperature TB here, equals to T2, which is T hot, and then you got V2, which is the, the, the volume uh, V sub C. You got that? Okay, all right. Back to the equation. So I have this one, <clears throat> and I'm going to call it equation 5. I'm going to come back to it. And now let me do the process from D to A, the last one. Again, it's an adiabatic process. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to uh, write it down. So it's T hot 
V sub D gamma minus 1 equals T cold, which is T sub C, uh, V sub A gamma minus 1. Okay? Now, I want to do, what I want to do, I want to link those two equations, this is equation 6, to the equation 10 right here. Okay? Somehow, I want to do that. Okay? Now, let's look at, so what I want to do, one way to do it is you divide 5 by 6. Okay? Divide, by the way, this derivation is not in your book, so you may want to take notes on it. So, divide uh, 5 over 6. So that's gonna. What's gonna happen is that you're gonna get T cold, um, V gamma minus one B over. I'm gonna use this one right here to be over that. That's T cold. I want to get rid of the the temperatures, if you know what I mean. Over V A gamma minus one equals to T hot V sub C gamma minus one over T hot. V gamma minus 1 and D. Look at that. So those cancel out, which is nice. And then what I could do, I can take that ratio on the left hand. So that's VB over VA, VA to the power of gamma minus 1 equals VC over VD to the power of gamma minus 1. That if they have the same power, so I can actually eliminate the powers. So finally, I get this. Uh, the ratio V sub B over V sub A equals V sub B over V sub D. I got that. Now go back to 10. Look at 10. So we have the ratio here. Look at equation 10 right there, which is right here. V B over V A is actually equal to V C over V D. That's what it says. Okay. So the natural log of both is going to be the same. So that basically goes to 1. You see what I'm saying? So I'm left with this. You understand that? So I'm left with now we end up with um, Q sub C this is from 10 over Q hot equals to minus. We picked up a minus sign remember? Over T sub H, and that's it, right? But uh, what is the mean? What's the meaning of this minus sign? It really doesn't mean much. Uh, so what I want to do, I just want to take the absolute value. Remember, I talked to you about the absolute value uh, because the ratio would actually be the same here. Okay. So what will happen is that I want to just take the absolute value of those two, and this gives me basically Q C over Q hot is equal to T C over th okay in other words the ratio is the same so now uh going back to the efficiency since the efficiency is equal to one minus q sub c over q sub h i can write it as one minus t sub c over t sub h okay or efficiency is equal to th minus t sub c over th okay and that's basically the carnet efficiency so what does the Carnot efficiency says? No engine that operates between those two temperatures, T, C, and T, H, can have a larger efficiency than the Carnot efficiency. Let me write it down. No engine that operates between T, C, and T, H no engine can have a larger efficiency than the Carnot efficiency. It's a very, very strong statement. Okay? In other words, I have, as I told you the, just a few minutes ago, if I have an engine and I know the two energy, the, the two temperatures of that engine, TC and TH, I want to calculate the maximum efficiency that this engine can operate on. It's basically that, or that. You see what I'm saying? That's really what it says. Okay, excellent. 
So that's basically what's left of the chapter. So let me do, um, I have two problems at least. Let me turn the light on. It's getting dark. It is, uh, I'm doing this video at uh, 6, 17 p.m. Monday. I hope everybody's uh, healthy and keeping safe. All right, let me flip the pages of the book to that problem. I want to do another, let me do problem number, uh, I like number 20, let's do, I think it's homework. Oh, I'm going to show it to you here. <clears throat> um, questions, attention, number 20. It's not a bad problem at all, but uh, there we go, this one here. I believe it's homework. Let me move it on the side right there. Okay, uh, it says, um, sorry. Okay, it says here, uh, here's the graph, okay? As we read the problem, here's the graph. So we have basically a cycle, right? And uh, we don't know what it is. So we have pressure, a PV diagram. We have a cycle. Uh, those, it's uh, probably adiabatic. There we go. It says adiabatic. So those are adiabatic processes from here down to there and then from here up to there and so on. He's, he said, what are a the heat extracted from the cold reservoir? and be the coefficient of performance for the refrigerator shown in the figure. So this is a refrigerator cycle, okay? It's not carnet or anything. It's just a refrigerator cycle, okay? Let me, let me draw it. I hope I'll be able to draw it nicely. And by the way, I, I did the video last time the audio was terrible. I, I apologize for that. Uh, I have a microphone, but uh, to my uh, stability, I forgot to turn it on, so I used the internal microphone of the of the PC, and I wasn't aware of that, even though I had microphone right there uh, hooked up to me. So uh, anyway, I today I made sure that the microphone is on and it's working. So uh, hopefully you are hearing a better audio. Okay, so um, number twenty. So what we have in here. try to make a better drawing to it. So basically we have two adiabats. Usually they are curved that are vertical like that. Try to make it as good as possible. As you can see, this is awesome curve. There we go. And these look kind of vertical. Straight up like that and this is the same thing. So we have the cycle that goes like this down this way and then up this way and up this way okay and then it says we have work is equal to negative 119 joule and then here we have work is equal to 78 joule and then here we have heat is extracted 105 joule so what would that be guys that'd be cool hot it's a refrigerator remember so it works in opposite so extracted heat would be the Q hot, okay? It's not it's not mentioned in the problem here, but I can I can guess that this this is this what it is, right? And then we have the work here. Okay. So uh he says uh calculate the heat extracted from the cold reservoir. What are the heat extracted from the cold reservoir and uh and the coefficient of performance, okay? Okay, so first of all, let me get the work, the net work here. The net work here, basically, you add up the, the two works, the net. So minus 119 plus 78, so the net would be negative 41 joule. Okay, so that's the work net. Okay, all right. So this, what is this work? This is... The work needed uh, 
to push. Remember, this work is what? Input. Remember, it's not output. What's the job of the work is to, what does the work in the refrigerator? Is to take heat from the, from the uh, cold reservoir and put it into the hot reservoir. So that's how much work you need. So this work is needed to put Uh, to put uh, heat, or push, I should say, push the heat, to push the heat uh, from the cold reservoir to the hot reservoir, HR. Okay? So in this case, the QH is equal to 105 Joule. Okay? Now, we know that work is also equal to the, the absolute difference between the two. Okay? So in this case, we would have 105 minus the difference. Okay? So we're just doing the difference here. Uh, so I have here Q sub C, and then this work is equal to 41. Okay? absolute values here. We're talking here absolute values. Okay? So, I mean, remember, the minus here just says it's input. But the actual absolute value is the difference between QH and QC is equal to the work. Does this make sense? You see what I'm saying? Okay. Whether it's negative or not, but it is the difference between the two. Okay, so with this in mind, so therefore, Q sub C would be equal to uh, what is that? Uh, Q sub C would be equal to uh, 105 minus 41. Did I do it right? Should be, right? And that will be equal to 64 joule. So this is the heat that is coming out of the uh, cold reservoir. You see what I'm saying? That is done by the work. Okay, now the last one, he said this is the heat extracted and then uh, from the cold reservoir. Now you want to know what is the coefficient of performance, COP. Or your book called it K. So what is it? What's the formula for it? It is Q sub C over work. So that will be 64 over 41. Again, ignore that minus sign. And that's 1.6. Okay. Now for a typical refrigerator, I believe the coefficient for a very modern refrigerator, I believe it's in the range of 12, I think, for a good refrigerator. So that's one, one, 1.6. Got it? Okay. Um, one more problem. This one is really good problem. A little bit long, but it's not a very nice problem. Number, <clears throat> that's the last one I'm going to do today. Uh, number 22. Okay. There are uh, three drawings in this problem. We have to draw. And I believe it is homework as well. Number 22? Yes, 22. Okay, uh, let me let me make the drawing. There are three drawings here. Let me draw them all. <clears throat> or maybe I'll draw one of them. Uh, okay, well, let me, let me show it to you. Well, we have the drawing here, actually. So maybe I don't need to do that. There it is right there. This one right here, okay? I wish I could magnify this thing. How do I magnify that? Uh, you got to be a way to do it. Give, give me a sec. Uh, you're probably laughing at me. So easy for you. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Mac user, and this is a PC. And I'm new to the PCs, but anyway. Uh, I don't know. Oh, well. Go ahead, make fun of me. That's okay. Okay, uh, so what it says here, uh, which, if any, of the heat engine here violate the first law and the second law? Okay, that's interesting. So we have those three heat engines, and we want to see which one violate the first law, which one violate the second law. Okay, let's see. Let's start. Let's start with uh, the first one. The first one I'm going to draw is I'm going to make it really simple. So this is part A here. So we have here, this is the hot reservoir, temperature hot is 600 Kelvin, and here is your um, engine, 
uh, I mean, whatever going on here, the system. And then you have the QH is here is 500 joule. And then coming out is QC is 200 joule. And then here is your cold reservoir right there. And it is TC equals 300 Kelvin. Okay, everything in the proper unit. And then the work output is 300 joule. Okay, cool. All right. So how do I know that this violates it or not? Well, we know that one relationship is, is that uh, according to the first law of thermodynamics, let's talk about the first law first. The first law basically says the um, QH is equal work plus QC. Do we have that? Does it hold? QH is 500 equals work is 300 plus 200. Uh, did I do it right? Oh, that's the temperature. Okay, right. So that's this is good. So the first law is not violated. It's obeyed. So the first law is obeyed. How about that? Okay. Now let's look at the second law. The second law, we can actually appeal to the Carnot cycle. This is the second law. That's one version of the second law. So let's look at the second law. So basically, we have here the uh, the efficiency is 1 minus Tc over Th. Okay? Let's look at that. So that's 1 minus Tc is what? 300 over 600. If I use my calculator, that will be 1 minus 0.5. So that's 50%. What does that mean? It means this engine, the maximum efficiency of it is 50%. It can never exceed 50%. Okay? It could be 45, it could be 30, 20, whatever, right? But it will never be, say, 51. Never. Okay? That's against the law of the second law of thermodynamics. That's basically one statement of the second law of thermodynamics. So what I'm going to do now, remember, this is the Carnot. I'm going to call it epsilon sub C for the Carnot engine. Okay? Remember, this is a theoretical uh, efficiency. Now, let me calculate the actual efficiency of this engine, okay, of this engine here, the actual efficiency of it, given with that data that we have. Okay, so we know that it is one, you know, the, the uh, from the first law, excuse me, from the first part of the chapter, it is 1 minus Q sub C over QH, remember? That's one version of it, so that's 1 minus, uh, or uh, sh should I... Uh, I mean, we, we can use that. So Q sub C is 200 over uh, 500. And when I calculate that, that's 1 minus 2 fifths, right? And that will be uh, 3 fifths. Is that right? Well, 3 fifths, guess what? That's, uh, so this is the, the, the engine uh, for part A. Let me just call it the engine of part A. This is the Carnot efficiency, remember. It's highly theoretical. And no heat engine can exceed the Carnot efficiency. This is the engine that we're dealing with right here. So that's equal to, so the Carnot efficiency, uh, excuse me, the, the heat engine here is three-fifths, which is, um, what is that? Uh, let me use my calculator. I know it's greater than uh, 50%. So three divided by five, <coughs> oh, 60%. Okay, so that's equal to 60%, which is greater than the Carnot efficiency. No way. This is violated. You see what I'm saying? The second law of thermodynamics says, or this one version of it, is that no engine can violate, can, can exceed the efficiency of the Carnot engine. So that's violated. You see what I'm saying? So it, it obeys the first law, fine, by the, with that, but it is violated when it comes to the second law. Okay? Simple enough? Okay. Let's move on to part B. Let me put a part B, which is right here. Right? Let me draw it again. <clears throat> so I have here the hot reservoir. T hot is 600 Kelvin. And then I got the extracted heat, QH. And they get the system here. Work come out 200 Joule. And QH is 500. And then here is 200, looks the same as the above one, 200. And then here we have what? 
uh, cold reservoir and temperature C is 300 Kelvin. I don't see the difference between them. What's the difference between them? Oh, I'm sorry. This is uh, th uh, this is 300. This is 200. You see that? Okay, cool. All right. Let's talk about the first law. First law says QH equals uh, W uh, plus QC. So we have uh, 500 QH, right? Right there equals to W 200 plus 200 of course they're not equal so the first law is violated got it simple very simple okay let's do the second law I like this problem because it really gives you an idea what the, what what uh, what's the first and second law are. Anyway, second law. Uh, so let's get the efficiency of this engine before we do the Carnot. So that's just the efficiency of this heat engine, okay? Which is basically one minus QC over QH. I like to use the other one, W over uh, QH. It's kind of faster, right? So the work here is two hundred over QH is uh, 500 and that's 2 over 5 right 2 over 5 that will be 40% uh, okay now let's do the Carnot efficiency or Epsilon or I keep switching between them, I'm sorry so we have E sub C because your book is E uh, the uh, Epsilon or E sub C that will be equal to um, uh, what is it 1 minus T sub C over T hot. That's 1 minus. T sub C here is 300 over uh, 600, and that's equal to 0.5, which is 50%. So as you can see here, the uh, E sub B is less than the Carnot efficiency, which is fine, all right? So it's obeyed. It got to be less or the same. You see what I'm saying? That's what it is. Okay, the last one. So here I have a hot reservoir. It's right here, guys. Right there. Okay, hot reservoir, and the T hot is 600 Kelvin. And then I have, here is the system. This is 300 joule, that's Q hot. And then I have uh, coming out QC is uh, 200. And that is a cold reservoir right there. TC equals 300 Kelvin. And then the work is 100, all right? Okay, so let's do the first law. So Q, um, Q hot is equal to QC plus W. And that gives me, uh, uh, what is it, uh, 200 plus 100, and that's equal to 300, and it is uh, violated. It's, oh, it is obeyed. Sorry, it is obeyed. So, no problem with the first law, right? Okay. And then we go to the second law. All we need to do is to calculate the efficiency. So I have the efficiency epsilon for the um, for the system C here, not the Carnot. This is part C. Okay, uh, that will be equal to uh, Q sub. Uh, what is it? I forgot. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, w over Q hot. I don't want to do this one. W over Q hot. So that will be equal to 100. Q hot is 300. And that's equal to 33% roughly. And then the Carnot efficiency, Carno efficiency, and that will be equal 1 minus TC over T hot. 1 minus TC over T hot, 300 over 600. And that's 50%. So as you can see here, uh, e, C, the part C, is less than the Carnot, 
car, not efficiency, and therefore it is obeyed as well. Okay, so both laws are obeyed. So this this uh, heat engine is uh, possible. You see what I'm saying? Let me just look around here. I think everything else look okay. Um, uh, please let me know if you have any questions uh, by posting them under uh, Ask the Professor. And I'll, you know, I check that every 24 hours. I try my best at least. I, sometimes I forget, but uh, uh, I, I may, I'll make sure every morning I, I check them. And if you have a specific question, you can, uh, uh, you know, just tell me which problem or uh, or you have a specific question, you know, about that problem, whatever, you, something you know, confusing or whatever. Uh, you're welcome to discuss that with me. Okay? And have a good day. That's it. Bye-bye.